Hello, and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma. I'm Nick, and today's episode is a really special one because it was recorded live in India at the end of an intensive retreat with our beloved teacher, Swamiji. Now, if you've listened to the podcast in the past, then you've heard us talk about Swamiji at some point or another. He's a hugely influential teacher in our lives and a truly stellar human. Now, we're going to be doing an entire series dedicated to what we learned and uh, integrated really from this uh, this latest trip. But for now, in this episode, we're going to talk about our experience in, with India itself, which is uh, fascinating, and also the ashram experience, and also our biggest insights and takeaways. So really, the topic for today is all about discipline and how to bring that into our lives. So please enjoy this episode of Illumination Podcast. Welcome to the Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can sparkle just a little bit brighter each and every day. If what you hear speaks to your soul, go ahead and give us a rating and a review in iTunes. You can also find us on SoundCloud and Stitcher. And hey, if there's somebody in your life that you think would enjoy this podcast, go ahead and share it with them. Hey, Kizma. Hi. How was your week? <laughs> well, given that we are sitting here at the Vedanta Academy in our room, getting ready to go to the airport in about an hour, looking back on it all, it was a pretty astounding week. Pretty phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, epic. it was just a yeah. mi- epic, mind blowing mm-hmm. mm-hmm. kind of a week. Yeah. Um, what it's been probably like four years since I've been here. Yeah, too two long. Years since yeah, I've been. And uh, you know, you, you've probably heard us talk on if you've listened to any of the podcast yeah, episodes. Yeah, you've, you've probably heard us talk heard about us, Swamiji yeah. and Vedanta and just our experiences here. And it was such a gift to be back here and really cool timing too, because some of our listeners have been like, "When are you going to do an episode on the intellect?" Because you guys talk about the intellect and it's really interesting, but well, we're going to have many episodes on many the intellect. Episodes. This is like one of just a chunk of the episodes about our India experience. Yeah. So a few that are coming mm-hmm. are uh, definitely one on the intellect yes. just to really like understand the human equipments and what they do. Uh, another one on the, I think we should do one on the middle path. The middle path that was, was a, amazing. That was really cool. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then we got to sit down with, uh, this, uh, the amazing teacher, um, it's the guru's daughter, mm-hmm. uh, Sunanda Ji, and she's a phenomenal woman. And uh, we got to sit down and interview her. Uh, and I can't wait to share all about that. Yeah, you know, she so. won't be on because of certain things. We'll explain later, but we get to share our stories. Yeah. Which were really cool. Which was really special. Like it turned yeah. out to be so much cooler. Yeah. Uh, so we're at an ashram. If you've seen any photos of us, if you happen to follow us on Facebook or whatever, we got our robes on and everything like <laughs> that. So. You might be wondering if we've joined a cult or whatever, but uh, I can assure you that we haven't. Uh, but uh, I think people might be curious, like a day in the life of, a like what happens life. here. Yeah. So where do we start? Well, we start first thing in the morning. So what happens is there's something called sattvic hours between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. And if there's anything in your life you want to change, and this is, this is consistent throughout many spiritual paths and religions. If there's anything in your life you want to change or rehabilitate, the sattvic time is the time to do it, between 4 and 6 a.m. So at 4.15, on the campus at the Vedanta Academy, the bell starts to toll. It's a beautiful sounding bell. And within 10 minutes, you are to be outside standing on this beautiful, beautiful path, still in the moonlight or the starlight because it's dark, and chant the morning mantra. And of course, when you come, they tell you, you don't have to do this and it's not required. And in fact, if you remember, Nick, like our trip here was so long, it was like 24 hour, whatever. We got here at 5 a.m., took a nap, went to class that evening and saw Swami G. And he's like, you guys, you look kind of tired. Don't get up at four tomorrow. (laughs) You don't get up at four. I'm like, well, okay, okay. It was really sweet. It was so sweet. It's like giving us a pass. You don't have to do it. And it's, you don't have to, you don't do anything here. But, you know, when you see other people getting up at 430 to chant or pray, it's really inspiring. And I remember that first morning I had the first conflict. Like I woke up because of jet lag at 338. 
And then in my mind, I'm like, oh, but the guru told me not to get up at four. So should I try and go back to sleep? But I really want to get up and I'm up anyways. You know, it's so it was like this thing going on in my mind. And then all of a sudden I arrived to, well, perhaps he said that. So I would be released of any attachment or worry and I could get up. Yeah. It totally took the pressure off. It took the pressure off and like we were up and we were out. And the thing is, once you're out there standing in line and because we are here for a specific retreat and we're considered guests, they had this amazing big TV monitor on the, the lawn with the mantra because it's in Sanskrit. So you're seeing this thing lit up. It's dark. You feel everybody's presence and you chant. It's a short chant. But once you do it, it's like, how can you not do it the next day? Yeah. In the next day, in the next day, like to get up and feel that air and the moon and the, it's the most amazing experience. And then turn around, you walk back in and you study for what we put in pretty much 60 minutes. Yeah, about a good 60 mm-hmm. minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At that time between four and six, from what I understand is like, it's basically the whole thing is like, that's the deal. That's you know, the that's deal. really what you're here to do is to spend the time uh, in, uh, study and reflection, Mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, to spend that quiet time with yourself to, to really churn over, uh, the information that's been delivered and to come to a greater understanding of it. Right. Amazing. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. And what I think is, um, I mean, you've, if you've listened to the podcast too, you've probably heard us talk about this, the sattvic hour, you've heard us talk like the importance of that time before Mm 6am, uh, and to, to really make the, the best use of it. And this, that's how they do it. And that's actually where we got this from. Um, and, and lo and behold, uh, like so many things is it's just right on, like it's right you're, on. you're more clear at yeah. that time. You're able to, to really think much more clearly and no much one's more deeply filtrated your day. Yeah. And you're not picking up your <laughs> phone, you know, and mm-hmm. going through, you know, Facebook or emails or whatever, whatever it is, you know, and and I know like, you know, I've definitely gotten into those habits myself too, where, um, you know, you just kind of slip into it and it's like, you Mm -hmm. you know, you got a lot of thoughts about work and things and the business, you know, the podcast and like whatever else. And it's like, you know, you grab your phone, you check the emails first thing in the morning and and it's like, you haven't even had it. You don't even give yourself a fighting chance for the day, you know? Um, but when, when you really dedicate that time and that's really what this place is set up to do is to give you that time. That space. That is the sacred space. It's so powerful. Yeah. So you you finish the study and then by 545, we'd go and have tea. Go have tea. Tea is served. So we've already had a chant study, made notes, reflection. You know, the study is encouraged to be very deep and reflect. 545 T, 620 yoga. 620 a.m. we do some yoga. 7 a.m. we chant again. And then exercise. So I took a lot of walks around the campus. One morning we went up to the caves. Oh, the caves. That was so cool, the Bajan Caves. So it was a long hike. We left at 6 that morning. And then everyone showers at 8, not together. It's not a freak place. But you go and you take a shower at eight. Free place. And then breakfast at what? 8.30? 8.45? Yeah, 8.30. Yep. So, and then class is at 9.45. So by the time 9.45 comes around, you've structured your time and your space and your mind and your intellect. Everything is on track to receive some amazing information. Yep. In it's, whatever it's form, perfect. you know, yeah. whether it's a, a lecture with him live mm-hmm. uh, or for us, you know, a lecture with uh, Sunandaji, right. uh, you know, or a video lecture. They, right. they show those as well, you know, recordings of his mm-hmm. lectures. They're brilliant, you know. So whatever it is, you're sitting down to, you know, really take something exactly. meaningful in and you're you're full on. And when I look at all the things that happen before 945 a.m., man, I'm like that's better than you know, many days that I (laughs) get done all day. And he talked about it too, specifically said, by the time you get into the afternoon of the day, it's over. Like, yes, many of us still work and we're productive and I know whatever, but for the real exquisite information, you're toast. Yeah. And in he, we just ran into a student friend of ours who has helped Swamiji edit all these books. And so they would show up at his bungalow at 445. Yeah. And between 4.45 and 6 a.m., they would help him edit. And he's like, that's when you got the real Swamiji. Yeah, Because when was he's speaking, yeah. like he's often acting, he's really entertaining, he's kind of cheeky and he's, you know, 
doing all this, but when you're there looking at the text and editing at that time in the morning, it's just like this massive light beam, unlike anything else. Yeah. I, I can't even imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you say acting, I think we might want to clarify that. Yes. A little bit. It's not like he's just like putting on a show. Well, no. I guess he kind of is, but he's not, it's not without purpose. Right. Um, it, 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 he's a master teacher. Right. And, and a master teacher is like, the thing that most impresses me with all the great teachers that I've ever, ever seen is they communicate to the student that's in front of them so specifically to yes, how they exactly. can understand to their personality, because mm-hmm. it's the conditioned personality that he's trying to cut through so that you can actually absorb the information. Right. Um, but he does it so artfully that it can seem like, you know, a show or an act, right, which I right. guess it kind of is in a certain way, but it's, with that higher purpose of like, you know, really and truly serving that student in the highest. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, I've never seen him without that filter. I don't know what that would even be like, but the manuscripts. So Uh if you've ever, if you've ever taken us up on, on, you know, our recommendations, uh, follow the human intellect is a book that we recommend a lot. Um, And then there's, you know, many others that he's written, but we had the opportunity to see his manuscripts today. Perfection. When I think about like, you know, when I handwrite oh something, like even if it's something that I have to handwrite, you know, and then type up to put on Facebook or whatever, I'm like scratching stuff out. It's like, it's a mess, you know, his notes are meticulous. Yeah, absolutely perfect. His handwriting is exquisite and there is not a word scratched out. Yeah. And if you read through it, it, that is what appeared in the book, you know, maybe a few minor edits or, mm-hmm. you know, a comma misplaced here or not misplaced, but moved here or there. He wrote these books with no, I mean, it's just like, it just streamed right through and right onto the paper. Mm-hmm. I, I can't, it was hard to even conceive. It, it was, was just phenomenal yeah. to watch yeah. or to see it, you yeah. know, to see that work. Yeah, I, that I didn't so realize. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But I want to swing back around. So we're talking about this structure of our day. All right. We're up at four freaking 15 and we're chanting and then we're doing this. And then after class, we have a break and then there's lunch and then there's nap time and then there's more chanting and then there's another class. And this is over and over and over again. We've only been here five or six days. And so to some people, it seems like what? Fanatical. Fanatical. Yeah. That's my first thing. Like, oh, that's a cult. (laughs) That's weird. And why would you do that? That is insane. Right. You know, so let's clarify because there's two, and this is really, I think the essence of what we want to convey in this podcast, because it's applicable to life, to business, to everything. Fanatical is a human or humans who are so entrenched in the need to be right that they're arrogant. And they, if you want to debate or have discussion, no, they shut it down. It's over my way or the highway conviction, which is what we see throughout this campus, throughout the course, is being really aligned with truth. And therefore, if anyone comes up and they have questions or they want they want to talk about it, that person holding the truth and the conviction is so patient and will be there to the last question. Yeah. And that's they have the, nothing to hide. They have nothing to hide. So it's it is reasoned, right? And that's the whole essence of this academy. They're always saying the first lecture is like, don't believe this because I'm telling you. Yeah. And he's like, you have to inquire, inquire. That's the intellect piece. Always question it. Make decisions for yourself. Now, interestingly enough, those decisions that people here and for us make for ourselves arrive so much easier when there is a structure and a discipline and conviction mm. in the day-to-day living because the human mind wants to get distracted and go out. And is this right? Is that right? Like, there's so much drama and trauma in the world that it is seemingly impossible to go inward and really reflect and inquire as to what's most important. Yeah. It, the space isn't really there. The space isn't you there. Know, because if you don't have um, some measure of discipline, you know, you'll just, you'll fill the space with other stuff. It, yeah. it, it's like, uh, you know, if you've got suddenly you've got an hour of free time, you know, in your day, something happens and you got a free hour, you know, what do you do? You don't just like sit around. Like you always seem to find fill something to fill it with, mm-hmm. you know, um, whether it's you know, flip on a TV show or you waste another hour on Facebook, or you just like, you busy yourself with something. Yeah. Oh, I can get this and this and this done. You know, it'll just get filled up with all this other stuff. And so this structure is put in place 
that has been um, developed. You know, it's, right. it's like he, everything is thought through. There's a purpose for absolutely everything. Yeah. And, and, it, and, and on the surface, it might just seem insane. You know, like, why would you do that? But but when you really dissect it and get to the root and the essence of it and how it's all set up, the entire place is set up really and truly with one purpose. And that is to develop the human intellect, the entire program. Right. You know, and students come here for a three year program. They do that. What we just described every day for three years, like every day. They don't have weekends. They don't, you know, there's they, no holiday. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they take trips and of course people, you know, it's all, they're all cared for. If someone's getting overwhelmed, they, they figure it out. Yeah. But it's, it's an amazing, an amazing structure in conviction. Like I've never seen. So everything on campus is just perfect and beautiful. Everything they do is to do. And we say they, it's either the students in the three-year course or the senior students that won't leave or people that are helping that have been here and they're senior, senior students in there in the administration or Swamiji or his daughter, Sunandaji, but everything is at the best they can do it. Yeah. Excellence. Is, Excellence is status. Yeah. That, that's the standard mm-hmm. kind of reminds me of the classical music, right, you know, right. without the insanity right. uh, was, you know, that level of perfection. Perfection is just like, that's the baseline, right. you know, where you start. And, and that I see that here, um, but without what's in, you know, it's like, it's that same level, but without all the agitation, without all the insanity no around agitation. it, you know, yeah. I realized that right on, like, that was one of the first uh, things that I became aware of in myself was, uh, not a really great relationship with discipline. Mm. You know, I noticed that like, yeah, you talked about that. Yeah. I kind of go back the word and forth. Funky for it's you. a weird word for me. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I need to replace the word or I think more, I just need to resolve my yeah. stuff with the word. But, um, but either way I noticed that it's like, I, I had a tough time kind of understanding that or, or, I would say the best way to put it is to, is uh, abusing myself Mm. with the discipline, Yeah, you know? So it's like, you set it up, you want to do it a certain way, you know, why, you know, I Mm. want, I know why I want to follow the schedule because it works, you know, Mm -hmm. and I have great days when I do it, but, um, but the discipline of trying to do it. And then if I fall short, you know, the self judgment and those kinds of things start to come in. I don't know if anybody else relates Mm -hmm. to them probably, but maybe not, you know, maybe you all are just clean and clear and don't do that, <laughs> but uh, I did. And, uh, and that was something I really got to explore in my daily study. It was right. like, you know, now I'm up early, so mm-hmm. I'm up, you know, we've been outside and got some fresh air, so I'm not going back to sleep, uh, you know, and, and, and to really look at that in myself, it was really helpful, you know, yeah. to understand amazing because discipline is so necessary. It creates it, freedom. It's, it's so incredibly necessary and it does create freedom. Yeah. But if you if you abuse it, if you don't have a good relationship with it, you're in, you're in trouble yeah. because your life will just go off the rails. And I've seen that in myself where it's like ultra disciplined and this is great. But then it like you ruin all the joy. Mm. And and I think that's something, too, is like if you haven't been here and met the people and had the experience, like you might think that, oh, well, here's a bunch of people like they're just followers yeah and they're just running through the thing like a bunch of robots yeah not the case not the case at all no and he talked about that too he's like you can't be on any spiritual path like a robot you can't meditate or chant or do anything like a like there has to be the devotion the feeling and the understanding and the inquiry yeah the inquiry behind it Mm. and so i saw exactly i see exactly the opposite Mm -hmm, of that like mm -hmm. yeah they they are disciplined like they follow the routine uh, because they see the value of it too. Uh, and, and that's what you do. Uh, but their personalities mm. are just so, uh, vibrant, vibrant, unique, sparkling, yeah. so cool. And they're not flusterable. They're not, what's the word? Imperturbable. Imperturbable. So these guys are like any problem that shows up, got it. Let's figure out the solution. Just rapid thinkers, yeah. executors like I've never seen. Yeah, let's just handle it. Yeah. It's so cool that there's, I don't think the recording will pick it up, but the uh, there's an Indian train of truth, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> there totally is. There's a train track that goes by, comes by in the lectures, which is kind of irrelevant because yeah. the truth is like just yeah. full on like all the time. <laughs> In the lectures, but uh, there's an Indian train of truth, everybody, and and it's here. It's going so right now. So before we get on our train of truth to go to the <laughs> airport, um, Alexis, how can our listeners bring conviction 
you know, we, we've been just dropped into this amazing experience for week of conviction and excellence. What can we all do back in the real world? Well, uh, another thing that I, another insight that I had was, uh, how necessary and not, yeah, necessary, but extremely helpful, uh, simplicity is. Yes. That's a good one. Right. Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. you, in measuring it out, you know, we talk a lot about proportion, you know, doing it in the right proportions. So let's say for example, um, you know, you have one thing, right? you pick one thing that you want to do with excellence and just honestly, just focus on that one thing and do it at the highest level and really become consistent with it. And it'll clean up all these other areas. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you'll, if you build that muscle in one area, you can one, you can hundred percent do it in, in another area. And two, you'll already be doing it right. because the discipline muscle is the discipline muscle and it applies to right. all the other ones, mm-hmm. you know? So I think, you know, as far as that is like, is just ask yourself, what's one thing that you want to be truly excellent at Yeah, and then just pursue that, mm-hmm. you know, for me, it's, uh, you know, going back, I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm getting a little sad that we're leaving and yeah. things like that. My mind this morning, especially was like, Oh man, like, you know, you want to hold on to it. It's like, well, well, like, how do I, how do I take this with me? Like, what do I do? Like, I don't want to lose it. You know, it's like, oh. which is all just attachment anyway, but that's beside the point. I'm, you know, my mind is like, okay, well, how am I going to actually implement this in my life and really try to stay consistent with it? And, um, to me, that was like setting up my life in a much more mindful way around, yeah. around the right. schedule because the schedule freaking works. Man. It really works. Yeah. You know, and yeah. nap time's the best. Oh yeah. We had nap time at two. Nap time. Every day. Yeah. That yeah. was like, and I was talking with one of the, this is a, just a cute story. I was talking with one of the students, uh, we got up after nap time, you know, and, and, uh, you're talking with him about it and I'm like, Oh man, I just had the best nap, you know? And, <laughs> and the student too, he's like, they're all so charming. Like they're yeah. such lovely people. And he's like, Oh, I can't do an Indian accent. But he's like, Oh, nap time is the best. You know, it's like <laughs> they, and you know, it's not like they're yeah, just like these, they're enjoying these yeah, simple things, man. Yeah. Wow. And so appreciate yeah. the, the value of a, yeah. of a really great nap, yeah. you know? So, well, it's inspiring. So whatever it is, the conviction, is allowing patience and grace, inquiry, all of that in the discipline to continue to have that, con- you know, a conviction is something in our lives that we just don't go back on. Yeah. And, and I think that is needed in the world right now because we're seeing a lot of roller coaster up and down and all around emotions and fears like be convicted, but be patient, be kind, be compassionate, hear other people because you know, Swamiji said it today. He's like, those who serve, people want to be around them. Mm. So when you're genuinely serving based on your conviction, people will come to you and they will listen and they'll want more. Yeah. You can get into, I think, uh, giving out of or serving out of proportion. Oh, totally. You know, it's sure. not about over giving, but yeah. service is an attitude. Service is the attitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. that's like the extrovert towards the introvert. So right. it's like, you know, I know this is, we're going to be unpacking this for weeks on the podcast and <clears throat> I'm really excited for that actually. Uh, Cause I know that I've got, you know, my own processing to do, but you know, those little nuances are really important because you hear these in spiritual teachings a lot, you know, service, like it's always service, 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 service. And you think that you have to go about your whole day, like, you know, just constantly uh, doing things, but it's, it's, you go about your business. Like that's what's so cool about this. I think that's why this place attracts uh, such amazing people. Like oh, yeah. every guest that we met, um, there were people here that, you know, they're, <clears throat> really successful businesses Mm -hmm. and really successful people and coming here and looking for a meaning or a purpose or something, a life purpose. There's students in the, in the course, there's doctors and dentists and veterinarians that have been in school and now they're coming back to do the course. But it is really astounding as to what can be accomplished with simplicity, with the conviction and just, aligning oneself the attitude of excellence yeah Yeah. i put a meme out the other day you know 
make excellence your default set. Yeah, I love that. And that's that's pretty much what they do here. Yeah, that's totally what they do. I was totally inspired by this. But it's like that one uh, that one piece, you know, mm-hmm. like, like don't overwhelm yourself because then you just set yourself up for failure, right. you know, and, and, and it's so easy to do that. You know, don't make it about everything. Try to do everything all at once. Like pick one thing for you that you really want to do at such a high, you know, really master it, yeah. you know, high level of excellence. And, and no matter what that is, you'll recognize, uh, mastering anything like as simple as it might be is not as easy as you think. However, when you have the conviction and you're really purposeful, it's much easier. And once you master one thing, you can master many things. You can master. And we saw that, you know, they're, yeah. they're doing, they're practicing their dance routine, yeah, you know, right. for a show. The YPO. That it's the, so cool. They have a YPO retreat here yeah. and, and the, the students were practicing part of their show. And it's like, here, you know, they, they're none of them are dancers, but no. they're like, it's great. Like yeah. they do a really good job, you know. Well, we're going to see how excellent our our ride is to the airport as we exit. Any last words for our listeners before we will be having uh, other episodes just on intellect? We got to sit down with Sunandaji and talk with her. So we're going to share our stories about that. I mean, basically, the next series of podcasts will be about this trip. But for now, yeah, full for that, um, the the importance of. acting in a line in, a, in accordance with your nature, mm. you know, we're definitely going to talk about that and how important that is right. to your spiritual development. Like there's so much stuff coming, right? Like, there's so much stuff coming out of this. I just, I can't wait. Uh, I'm not uh, last insight, but the last question yeah. is, uh, is the podcast going to be losing you to India? Are you moving? Are you- <laughs> <laughs> I see the look in her eyes. I know that, y- you know, it's hard. It's hard to leave. Like I get mm-hmm. it. Like I totally get it. It's hard to leave. So I'll no promises. Sus- I'll pull a Donald Trump. I'll leave you in suspense. <laughs> All right. Well, good to know. Good to know. We're gonna, I guess to be determined, everybody. Uh, we hope we don't lose you. It'd be uh, it'd be weird. But Nick and Kisma with no Kisma. But um, there's work to be done. I would get it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's one thing that I would totally get. Uh, no, I, I think that's about it. Yeah. it. It's just an amazing place, and. Um, I can't wait to, I can't wait to do some more episodes and yeah, just talk about all, all that we've experienced here and, and to share and as much of it as we can. in the show notes, everyone, we'll have some links to a couple of the books that we highly recommend for those of you that have not uh, read them yet. And as always, much love. Much love, everybody. Peace. Namaste.